Hello, welcome to the second part of the IV2. In this part, I want to actually create a couple more branches on the spaceship that I have now. So I can create two versions of branches. For example, branches that sort of like fall off the shape and like are growing a bit out of shape. This will actually break up the silhouette a bit more. And I could also have branches that, for example, would are, are more hanging on top of the shape. So if, for example, here, uh, we are having a surface that is just flat to the ground. So we have, for example, ivy that sort of like start to fall off and hang a bit more on the ground. So I want to define those areas and shapes to then later also use in my leaf system. So first step, let's create some branches that, for example, would be hanging and create a bit more variation in the silhouette. So for right now, I'm not going to necessarily do the sweeping. So we're actually going to skip that step for later on. One of the first things I want to do now is I want to randomly delete points and grab just random points on my shape here. So we're going to say random node and we can grab random points here. So by default, the random works on a zero to one range. So if we, for example, place this in the middle, then 50% of the points are selected, 50% is not selected. What we can also do is change this from ratio to count. So now I can define, for example, that let's say I want, for example, 25 branches to like have on the side to create variation. And we also want to save this then actually in a group. So we have group selected. And what I want to do now with these selected points is I want to copy a random branch shape on this. And what is recommended doing here is when I want to copy a shape on a curve, for example, we have copy to curves, or uh, we can, for example, use the orient node. So orient along curve. And this node will actually calculate the direction of how a shape should behave or be copied over that curve. So we can go here to our rotations options. We can enable all three of them. So we can control uh, the roll, the jaw, and the pitch. So if you want to tweak those things, we can do it here. And also the up vector, I want to prefer it to be the up axis, which is the Y axis. Now, after that, I want to then uh, blast my points away. So let's see actually where we're going to have those things. So select it, reverse. And these are now the points where I will have those branches. So we're going to copy a shape on this. So copy to points. And I need a certain branch shape. Um, you can create this yourself by simply just using a draw node. So draw curve. Um, let's, for example, draw something very basic like, so this is my branch, for example, and place that in over here and see what we are going to get. So we are having this result, which is pretty random. So let's see if we can tweak some of the settings. So let's go back to orient along curve. And let's play around with the pitching value here. So we maybe want to rotate this like so. I think that looks better. So they're not, so they're more facing downwards. What I also want to do here is to make sure that we have some better control over the scaling. So I'm going to add a random noise, uh, a random attribute here. So random attribute. Uh, we want to say that this is uh, controlling the P scale, which will control the scaling of the object. And we want to say that this goes from zero to one now, but of course that might be too large. So let's say from uh, so 0.1 to maybe 0.5. So we have that result. Uh, we can also here with the global scale, quickly move this up and down. Let's get to like we can quickly tweak that. So make sure it's like subtle, but more on the subtle side of things. And as I said, we can always go back to the orientation here and we can just quickly, for example, rotate this a bit more like so, giving it some more twisting. I quite like this one. Maybe the scaling is a bit too large. So what we want to do is, for example, merge this with my uh, original branches here. And see how that works out. So as you can see, like it's breaking up the silhouette somewhat. And especially when I would copy leaves on top of this, it will actually nicely break up some of those silhouettes. Um, one thing here to do is if we check out how many points we have, this is probably pretty high. So we want to do a resampling. 
So resample. And we want to, for example, use the same number that I'm going to use for most of the things now is uh, 0 0.05. So we will have a quite consistent uh, values there. And also the color, uh, so the, the blue color is actually coming from this random node. So we're going to say, uh, don't show color. And now it's just the same color as the other ones. So we can quickly now add more of them by just going here and we can just add a bunch of them. Like this is quite interesting, but maybe it's like definitely too much unless you're going for like this very wild look where it has a lot of like branches falling or like going in all directions. So I think it's more nicer when you keep it on like a lower side of things that we like have more subtle breakups of the, of the silhouette there. And now the next thing is to calculate, for example, more of the, the hanging branches that would fall off. So here, for example, I want to have like a branch, that, for example, would go a bit more downwards. So I need to find a way how to calculate that. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a reference back to of my main shape. So what we can do is we can say object perch node. And with this, I can now get a reference here. So this node is outputting this result here. So I can now use this here. So instead of like having like lines over your network, you can just use this way to get, for example, references or parts of networks. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is, for example, we can also do a ray node now. And this ray node can be used to, for example, check if we are nicely on the surface of our object. And we want to use the method of using minimum distance uh, instead of that other one. And let's see if we have some variation. Uh, maybe I don't show the guide. As you can see, like here, it's quite noticeable that we are moving the points closer to our input shape. So we are basically double checking, like, if is my branch nicely aligning with my input shape. So we can do that here. Um, it might also be interesting to actually do a resampling pass here as well. Um, so if you add more points, it will actually be more accurate. So if I add, for example, like a very uh, small value, it will actually nicely follow our main input shape. But of course, it will add a lot of points here. So you're going to have to be careful with that. So I'm just going to keep that 0.5 here. And we can also do like actually a resample afterwards as well to make sure that we have like a consistent point numbers and spreading. Now back to the topic of trying to get this space where the branches are facing downwards. So what I want to do is I want to transfer over the normal direction of my input shape to this uh, branch shape. Oh, so I took the wrong transfer here. So transferring attributes. So we want to do something like so. And I want to specifically transfer the normal attributes. So we're going to place in normal nodes. So I don't think I have actually a normal value on this shape. So we don't have normals. So I'm going to calculate here the normal. Uh, we can actually go to point normal. So if we enable view normal mode, we can see that we have these normals. So we now can simply in a moment say like, if the normal is facing downwards, that is the part where my IV will be hanging down a lot. So we're going to transfer over that shape. So now, as you can see here, we are transferring over the normals. And I actually don't directly want to transfer the normals uh, because this will actually conflict later on. If I would here do my sweep again, uh, you would see that my sweep is not liking that when I override those normals, it's not really liking that. So what I will actually do is I will rename this to, for example, copy of the normals. So in here, I'm going to say uh, rename the normal to a uh, normal copy. And instead of transferring now here, uh, everything, I'm going to say transfer the points and tra transfer specifically the copy of that normal. So now if I do my sweep, uh, we have the normal sweep result as we had before. So no real weird issues going on here, just like a normal sweep. And now I'm going to use a little bit of effects. So in here, we have our copy normal attribute now available. So if 
we look here, we have those copy normals here. So I want to go over the y-axis to check what specific way are they looking at. So here, as soon as they are facing downwards, so in a minus value, they need to be selected in a certain group. So I'm gonna bring a uh, so I'm gonna bring in a wrangle, and I'm gonna type in a little if statement. So if the uh, vector at normal copy, so we are calling that value normal copy, and specifically we want to target the y value uh, and and check if this is uh, lower than zero. So if that happens, then we want to say that this is part of a new group. And we can simply say add group. Then we say the naming of the group, which can be, for example, uh, hanging points. Hanging points. And this is then equal to one. So let me check that quickly here. So when I use a blast node, I should now be able to see the hanging points and I will now be able to have this part. So these are the areas that are facing down. So that works correctly. We probably want to give this a better naming. Uh, let's say select uh, hanging parts, for example, or down facing parts. And we want to do it like so. So we can now, for example, grab this here as well. Um, so we now, so we can plug that in over here because we don't have any hanging parts values here. So it will automatically be zero. And from the shape, what I want to do now is create an add node. And I'm going to click here, delete everything except the points. So what we have now is just a bunch of points. So each point has now the possibility to spawn a hanging uh, branch. And of course we, if we would do this right now, we will have a lot of them. So we want to say randomly select and delete some of the points. So here, random selection, uh, we can just do this by percentage and I'm going to immediately delete them. Um, so maybe let's not do percentage and do by count. I think that will be better. Um, so let's say five. And I think I have to go the other way around, delete non selected. Um, so let's say maybe do 10 for now. So 10 points are now selected. Then we want to copy a shape on that. So copy points. We just want to grab a line. And by default, the line will look upwards. And we want to rotate that to look downwards. Uh, so when I copy this on the shapes, they all just look downwards. Um, now, what can happen is that there might be information here, like the certain normal that could conflict. So I maybe want to clean up this shape and remove the data. So let's do clean, uh, we will, especially here, untoggle this one and this one and enable here also those data. So now we are basically cleaning up the attributes. So we have nothing anymore. The reason for that is that, as you can see, like it's automatically here doing scaling and maybe if there is a chance doing rotations, but I don't want that. So that's very important to know. I want to now customly add, for example, a random scale. Uh, so let's do a random attribute and we do P scaling. And as you can see, we have these. So P scaling is a value of is dimension one and it can go, for example, for 0.5 to one. And then this is the global value of how far they can grow. So now we have that all set. What can also be interesting here is to also do a uh, Boolean and maybe the Boolean curve node. Um, so if you have like a more complicated shape, uh, you maybe want to Boolean your base shape, uh, this one, with that. So in this case, it's not really going to do anything for me. Um, but let's say, for example, you had like a box. Uh, if I merge quickly here, those together. So let's quickly say that I had a box, for example, somewhere here. As you can see, like it's automatically then starting to remove and delete parts that are would be conflicting if if something in my input shape or ground 
shape has like that information, it will delete that. So that's gonna be quick. Like, so that can be interesting to have. I'm just going to be not gonna implement it, but we will see how things go. Now further, we want to then also do a resampling, and I want to again resample uh, with that value I'm going to use. So zero five. And we can also now do a noise pass. So we can, for example, use the mountain noise. And this will add some like little noises here. So as you can see, like it's just simply breaking up this shape a bit. Um, we can do all kinds of different noise shapes. As you can see, we can uh, make it a bit more interesting. I'm just going to probably just leave it as the default. And from here, uh, what we want to do now is we also want to make a group for this. And we want to say that this is the hanging uh, finds group. So we know that information if we ever need it. So then we merge results. So we're going to grab this one and this one. And now we have this result. So now we have a bit more variation in our shape. Now, the final thing to test here is our sweeping. So I still had like that sweep note from before. So I'm going to grab it all the way here and check how well my system is holding up. So what I can see is that my branches that I created, they don't have any scaling values. So let's go to our first branch here where I made this drawing. I actually want to give this a certain scaling value. And what I can do here is I can use the distance along geometry. So distance along geometry nodes. And we can measure here uh, our length of the curve. So we're not going to use uh, the attributes. We're going to use the masking value. We're going to say that the starting point is zero. And our radius is going to be the maximum distance. So you should be able to see that we have some values going from zero to one over this line here. Um, so instead of actually calling this uh, mask, let's call this automatically p scaling. Uh, and let's go back to my result over here. And as you can see, this is working, uh, but actually in the reverse way. Um, so I need to go back. And I need to here reverse this. And now I have the correct result. So I can play around here with this ramp to define how this scaling goes. So maybe if it's a bit less, so that looks pretty good. So we have some variation there. And what I also want to do now is actually copy this distance along geometry nodes. And we want to copy this for the line over here. And now we have that here as well. So we have these vines and we also want to reverse that. So we have this result. And we are basically done for this video. So one thing I maybe want to add here is a remapping nodes. So attribute remapper. And what we can, for example, do here is we can say that look at the P scale. And in case it would be close to zero, maybe add something. So it's not at least zero. So if I go here, we can see that we can now control the minimum thickness. So I think it might be interesting to at least add something a bit higher than zero. So the branch has still something, a shape when it comes to an end. So that was it for this video. So we've sort of like finalized our branching system. So we have our main branch. We have some branches scattered uh, along our geometry and also hanging from uh, parts from the bottom. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.